Well, here we have a, a slate clock. It's a single train timepiece. It's uh, pretty grotty, poor condition, stained on the top. Uh, one of the columns here is off, but we've got it set aside. The top section is loose. It, it will move. You can see it. It's not not firm. And, uh, and now I'm going to start work on it. I'll take this part out first. Uh, the off and have a first look at it. Uh, you can see that it's very simple but it's dirty but uh, we've got the original pendulum. Uh, which again is pretty grotty but it's got the same number on, tallies through with that number. So there, here are the tally numbers, which is nice, with the original key too. Um, it'll need cleaning up, but that's going to be fairly, relatively straightforward, I think. Looking at it, everything's there, and in pretty good condition. So. I'll now assess what's got to be done. It's not easy because this section you can see down here, I think it's moving and it's free on there. But there's wire straps on the inside which go down here and hold it together. So I've got to assess what I'm going to do. And I'll come back with decisions later. Right, I'm going to start scrubbing the clock down now, the case, and uh, then I'll edit it so that it won't be quite as long. But I'll keep it running for a while. I'm using a, a kitchen pad, but this one's a new one. Last time I used a pretty exhausted one. Doesn't up too much. that it's going to come up as well as it's looking at the moment when it's wet things look so much better but we'll see Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, I'm not sure how that's going to turn out. Uh, i study it a bit more because it's, I'm not very happy with it. Because you can see there's still marks in it. There, and there's a, a stained mark over there. But I'm not sure what I'll do. But you can see that there's pop marks in it. Sort of almost a residue, like and down here. So I hope there's a showing. I'll see if I can see the different marks that are impregnated into it. Uh, I'm not sure how that will be when it's covered in the the, uh, the black dye Malbec but uh, I'll probably try it and if it doesn't work then I will have to think of an alternative system. Okay that's all for the moment. Right I'm back to cleaning the clock. What I did up to now is that I cleaned all these marks off here you can see I think um, on this side and cleaning it up to 2000 grit with sandpaper I've just scraped that little bit down there across here which is similar to this what I'm going to do is to scrape that like this and then to sand it with 2000 grit because I want to get these marks all the way through here all through there and the on the top here which i hope you can see here and here just make sure that you can yes um, and that the, the, the that residue there is really pretty awful as always when you're trying to do something where you know absolutely nothing about. But if you can see, I'll tilt that over as long as it doesn't break. This here, that's all got to be scraped off, otherwise, it's going to look awful. And that's quite a job. I'm you no. Know, ignorant as to how best to achieve it but I will I'll have a go at it okay that's it for the moment I'm really going at this at the moment um, really taking as you can see there's powder there which 
to be careful I don't split that. And uh, taking that off. And that was the same as this down here or up here but down here which is there you can see it's really pretty awful and it was the same as that and so now I have Taken that off with a screwdriver, square edge running along there and really attacking it. I'm now going to um, give it some sanding with 1200, then 1500, and then 2000. So we'll see how we work from there then. I did this top one just a bit more because it wasn't up to much. Oh. It's looking a tiny bit splodgy, but Taken by and large, you look at that now, down here, yep, and let's see what the other side looks like. Not very good, is it? All this around here and down here which you can't see at the moment, but oh, just bring that in. Down here, not at all good. And with the treatment I've just given it, you can see, I'm sure that would look better when it's stained up and you wouldn't get anything coming through. It's a long job going to be a lot of hard work but I think it deserves it it's nothing to write home about the clock because it's a, um, a single train doesn't chime but it's quite grand and judging by the movement and the clock key and the pend pendulum I think it must be about late 1800s, 1890, something, maybe 1900, or I don't think it's anything beyond 1900. And this work here is, is delicate. This is quite nice too, the, the marble. Uh, it's you know, one of many that they made, but it's all beautifully done. But you can see up at the top here, and I tilt it over. I hope you can see that. Let's see. Well, I finished <coughs> cleaning this up with sandpaper. I uh, I finished it off with 2000 grit so that there aren't any score lines in the finished slate which I've done before and made a mistake <coughs> which was very distressing. So it's now cleaned up <coughs> there's still some white marks here and there and in there and particularly in here but this is the back you can see there's machine marks on there that's not sanding marks um, 
I've cleaned the back up, I'm going to try and use two different types of black stain to see how they work out, if there's any difference in them. As you can see, there's still some white marks on those. <coughs> I did make a mistake. I was advocating using a screwdriver to get rid of the white in the recesses at the angles. Um, it was successful here and here, but unfortunately I put too much strain on the outside corner and as a consequence, I don't know if you can see the white line running across, across here. Um, I can't show you properly, but there is a white line. Uh, it'll be alright. It actually looks quite nice in as much that it's equidistant at both ends and it carries all the way through. So if it does show up, it'll look like a machine mark. Uh, I masked these sections here. That doesn't matter because those have got to be roughed up for pilasters that are going to go on there, which I've got to clean up yet. But I found it difficult to get inside there. But then when it's painted black or dyed black, that's not going to have the light shining on it to reflect any flaws. Otherwise, I think I'm, I'm very happy with that. Um, <coughs> these are the people who supplied it with, with the sandpaper, which actually was very good. It's uh, sanding belts. They're in where it is Boston, uh, reasonably priced. Um, but when you get them, for goodness sake, make sure you stipulate 10 sheets of what you want because they come in packs of 10 and the packs of 10 are mixed. And you don't want to have the heavy grades. What you want to do is have the light grades. In other words, the 2000s and the 1200s and the 1500s. The 800 is just fine to take it, stripping it down and getting it right, but you do need uh, plenty of the very fine, otherwise you'll be left with score marks on this, which I have illustrated on a previous um, video, and I had to start again and do it all over again. But I think that's pretty good, that'll be a nice finish, and <clears throat> when it's been blacked up and the, been, the gold has been picked out again, just livened up a bit, it'll look pretty good.